What's up everybody? Jericho Jack here and welcome to the very first Wolfpack Realm video recrap for weeks 9 and 10. We've already recrapped 9 beautiful steaming piles of recraps for you already and guess what? Week 10 is officially over. Let's check in with Wolf to fill us in with what's been going on in the Wolfpack for the past 2 weeks. First things first, let's talk about Lake Town. So for those of you who don't know, in week two, I, Wolf, got inspired to build a, a village inspired by Lake Town from The Hobbit. Because I'm insane, I managed to bulldoze an entire island village and proceeded to build a massive dock city. With Jack's help, I was able to save the villagers by creating a breeder in the existing church, which got turned into the now lighthouse at Lake Town. And then boom, we had a fully functional village again. So as of last week, week nine, uh, we now have a fully functional village, an active farm, and a villager trading hall, as, as well as an animal pen. So that being said, this is just a PSA. Uh, we need more realmers to trade with the villagers in the village hall, just to level up. Speaking of Lake Town, Yeti found an ocean monument nearby. Jack, realizing this was the perfect opportunity to start a guardian farm, began illuminating a path to the ocean monument uh, using jack-o'-lanterns. Now, I'll get back to this a little bit later. I just wanted to mention this because this is something that happened in week 9. So more on this in week 10. I just want to stop the recap for a minute to pay a special thank you to one of our favorite realmers, Lazy Greek Banana, because without him, we wouldn't be able to have this awesome logo that I at least hope is at the beginning of this video. So just want to take a moment and say thank you, Banana, for creating this awesome logo. Hopefully we can use it on a lot of things. As you might have seen in one of his flight attempt videos in recent weeks, Fled joined the realm and quickly took to the air to build his base. He also took several livestock with him, and while well, the results were mixed. But animal cruelty aside, Fled's got quite a base going in the sky. The newest addition of the realm, Blanchus, also managed to help him finish some of the rooms. It's looking pretty good. But Fled, if you're gonna put an animal pen up there, just make sure to, you know, give the animals parachutes or something. Come on. Not that anyone cares, and trust me, they don't, but this week, Coffee and I managed to finish the realm's PvP arena. It took about two weeks to build, so it was a little late to enter into Reddit's MCPE bi-weekly build competition, which was a PvP arena, but hey, at least it's finished. So, just a little bit about it, the arena comes with two entrances for fighters, beds, and in the center of the arena, there is an item dispenser that will dispense an item to the fighters every minute or so. Perhaps we might see Jack in the ring sometime soon. Construction began on Crazy Old Yeti's mysterious new base. Not much is being said as to what the final build will look like, but it seems for now that there is a giant dome being built um, between the giant mushroom spires that Yeti built. So we're not really sure what's up, but strange things are definitely afoot at Yeti's base. That pretty much does it for week 9. Let's get to this week. Week 10 builds coming right up. Okay, and now for something pretty interesting. For the past two weeks, we've done something really fun and unique on the Wolfpack Realm. As a fun change of pace, Jack and I created a floating island in the inn, which houses lots of building materials. We set up command blocks to kill Endermen, give players jump boost and rejuvenation, and so they can stay in their survival game mode, but kind of enjoy a more creative style build with unlimited resources. For the first two weeks, we decided to create a space theme and kind of let the players have at it. So let's take a look at the builds of that. It's pretty cool. So first off, let's get started with the awesome space fighters. Yeti and Jack both started with some awesome spaceships. Yeti's even comes with multiple chambers and rooms, redstone controls, and even a dining room table. And now let's get to Cat's space build. Lifestyles of the rich and intergalactic, as I like to call it. Cat's interstellar house comes with futuristic lighting and nice biome-themed yards, including a mushroom and jungle-themed section, which comes in handy when she gets homesick for the overworld. And now on to my section of the creative space build. So for my original idea, I really wanted to do a space station theme and not a space theme. But that's really just because 
I had been itching to do a space build for some time. Basically, what's making up this space station is a giant Taurus ring. Fled actually helped me finish. And inside of it are four distinct um, biome chambers. My thought being that this would be overworld research for while it was in orbit or something like that. I really wanted to get it to rotate, but also keep in mind this is a survival realm. We're kind of pushing it with this particular area, so I didn't really want to introduce command blocks. But yeah, that's my space station. The last creative build that I want to feature is Fled's Apollo 11 moon lander. Now, someone call Stanley Kubrick because we have a moon landing to fake. We have lights, a sound stage, and even working redstone cameras filming this notorious landing. It's one small step for man, another giant leap for the wool pack. Amazing build, 100% raw creative genius. Amazing work, Fled. Nice work. This week down at Laid, Jack got a single level of his IR farm completed. It's a bit buggy to say the least, and it might need a little bit of improvement, but at least it works. Jack also managed to add a master override switch to Laid. When engaged, it will send all items in the farm to be voided. This is to be used in overflow conditions so there isn't an increase or surplus of items. Amazing work, Jack. This has to be one of the best auto farms I've ever seen completed, not to mention made on Minecraft Pocket Edition. Awesome work. We already talked a bit about the Guardian Farm Jack set up. Well, the pack members voted to fill the ocean monument with gravel using OP powers to make it a bit easier to unearth. Blanchus, Craft Gig, and Jack started at it and got a good portion of the monument dug up, as well as got the Guardian Farm itself started. It's still quite a grind to dig all of that gravel up, but it's looking pretty good. Nice work. Blanchus, the newest member of the realm, raided the end early on in the week for a total of seven actual hours. That's a lot of grinding. After returning with more shulkers and items than he knew what to do with, he began setting up his own base in the overworld. It's still early stages, but it looks to be a massive castle-like structure that he's building. We'll have to check back, as I imagine this will get pretty big in the next couple weeks. Okay, and lastly, I gotta be honest, it gets pretty easy to get burnt out on Minecraft. Lately all my builds have been big or large to extra large size, and it's kind of causing me to want to return to the basics. You know, grinding and caving. In very similar yet separate sentiments, Jack and I both walked away from our large builds at Laid and Lake Town and our duties as admins to kind of just get back to basics. Jack, on the other hand, well, he was heard mumbling something about a church of redstone and embracing science over magic. Yeah, not, not sure, pretty strange. Anyway, more on that next week. And, well, that's it for week 10. I'm terrible at saying goodbyes, so I'm just going to kick it over to Jack for the outro. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Week 9 and 10 are done for. Don't worry about that murderous redstone elevator at Laid. I'll just put your lost kit in a shulker and we'll save it for you for when you can come back and get it. Now let's get to building something awesome for next week. We'll see you then.